So um, we started this example last time. We just gave the statement of it. We didn't really do much with it. Um, so we have this piecewise defined function where there's a what's called a parameter. It's not quite a variable. Um, like x is a variable in the sense that you could plug in anything for x. A is a parameter in the sense that there's only one number, or maybe there's two, but there's going to be only so many, maybe one, maybe two. In this case, it'll be one, I think, that that solve the problem and make it work, right? But it's it's it's, it's basically a, a parameter. It's kind of like a variable, but not quite. Um, it's something we are going to solve for, but it's slightly different. And the distinction is something you get um, by seeing it used repeatedly. So I'm not going to try to dwell too much on what a parameter is. I think just by seeing it in action, you'll kind of get the concept. You can always, you know, go on Google and look up the definition of it. But by seeing it in action, maybe you'll get the concept um, just from that. So we're basically going to use the same approach that we used for this uh, earlier problem. We were looking at this example and checking, is this continuous on its entire domain? So we, we you know, we decide, oh, well, you know, when, when x is less than 1, then this is just a linear function. So yeah, of course, that's continuous. It's a straight line. And when x is greater than 1, then it's just a parabola. So yeah, of course, it's continuous. It's just a curved line. But that at x equals 1, because that's where the switch occurs from one formula to the next, maybe there's a discontinuity. It's not so certain. So that's why we're looking for, is the function defined at 1? Is there a two-side limit at 1? And is there agreement between the function and the limit? So we checked all three of those things, and they all worked out for this one. And that means, oh, yeah, it's definitely continuous. So that's what we'll do here. Um, when Once we pick a number for a, I don't know what it is yet, but once we pick a number, then this will be a linear function with a slope of whatever. If a is 5, it'll be 5x plus 1, so it'll have a slope of 5, right? But in any case, it will be a straight line once we figure out what the slope has to be. So whenever x is greater than 2, the graph is just a straight line. It's continuous. Whenever x is less than 2, the graph is, again, a parabola, like the previous one. So that's continuous. But at x equals 2, because that's where the switch occurs, well, that depends on what a is. If a is 5, it probably won't work. Like if I were to go ahead and just say, oh, let me make it 5, right, 5x plus 1, and then I go through this, this process of checking the three points of the continuity test, it might fail to meet 0.3 or 0.2, potentially. It depends. I don't know. Probably would fail 0.2. Um, but I don't want to guess at a number like 5. I want to say, well, what does it have to be? I want to solve for this. So I'm just going to go through the three points of the test. So first of all, is f of 2 defined? Well, f of 2, that's going to be, since we're using 2, we're using the bottom formula. So we'll have 3 minus 2 squared. So 3 minus 4 is so a negative 1, right? So yeah, that checks out. We, um, we, we have the... Uh, the function is defined there. Now I will point out, and maybe we'll do another example like this, where if if the a had been down here instead, like if it had been 3 minus ax, then we would not get a number this way. We'd have something with a in it. We'd have like, we would have had something like 3 minus 4a. Well, remember, a is going to be a number, so that would also be okay. We'll do an example like that later as well. I just want to make sure that I, I'm able to say that f of 2 is something. Even if it still has an A in it, that's okay. And let me get rid of that A. Okay. So point two, what is the, the limit? The limit as X goes to A, oh, not A, sorry, <laughs> two, of F of X. What is that? Well, I'm going to have to do two side limits because it's a piecewise function. So I, I basically have to do it that way. Um, sometimes when you have a function that's not piecewise, you still have you still end up needing to do uh, the one side limits, but not always, it depends. But, but in this case, we have to. So I'll do the limit from the left first. I can do left to right first. It doesn't matter, but I typically do left first. So x goes to 2 from the left of uh, f of x. So that's going to equal uh, the limit as x goes to 2 from the left of, well, since x is going to 2 from the left, x is less than 2, so I'm using the, the parabola first. So this will be a 3 minus x squared. Okay. Now, since this is quadratic, the limit of a quadratic, it's a polynomial function, I just plug in, and I'll always get the right result that way because it's a parabola. 
or because it's a polynomial. So that's going to be 3 minus 2 squared or negative 1. So negative 1 is the limit from the left. Okay. Now the limit from the right, x goes to uh, 2 from the right, f of x, that equal the limit, x goes to 2 from the right of, well, now that x is greater than 2, we have to use this formula, ax plus 1. So this will be ax plus 1. So that's going to be, if I plug in 2, remember that this is a linear function. We just don't know what the slope is yet. That's when we were finding the slope through this process. Um, so that's going to be a times 2 plus 1. Now, we need agreement in order to have continuity. Okay. So we need for a times 2 plus 1 to equal negative 1. Okay. So um, I'm going to solve for a. I'll subtract 1 on both sides. So I get a times 2 equals negative 2. And I'll divide by 2 on both sides, get a equals negative 1. So I found the value of a, which creates agreement. So now we can say, uh, so we'll choose a equals negative 1. That's the parameter we're going to go with. So that means that this limit, the limit is x goes to uh, 2 of f of x equals negative 1. You, you have to make this choice, this assignment, and then you get the two-sided limit. Okay, and if you go back and check, and you redo uh, this step using a equals negative 1, well, then you get negative 1 as a result for the limit, and then you, you have agreement that way. If, of course, you don't. I would say you don't have to check that because this is how you got a by assuming I assume these two were equal. I assume that this one does get negative one as a result in order to find out what a value um, accomplishes that. So I don't need to go back and check, but if you were to, then that's what you would get. So now I can move on to step three. Limit, limit as x goes to two of uh, f of x equals negative 1, which equals f of 2. So we get all three points are met, and we get continuity. So f of x equal to, what is this, uh, negative 1x. I guess let's do this one, negative x plus 1, plus 1, right? Yeah. 1x is greater than 2, and then was it 3 minus x squared? x is less than or equal to 2, uh, is continuous. Okay. <clears throat> and again, this concept we'll use again later as well. Are there any questions about that one? I just got a little confused earlier, but then you clarified it when you um, assumed that, um, what was it, AX plus 1 equals negative 1? Hmm. A2. Eh. Well, yeah, A times 2 yeah. plus 1 equals negative 1. Mm -hmm. And um, what I initially, I was trying to figure out what you had done because you said it equals negative one. And I was trying to solve it when I, I try to set it in my mind to zero. Mm -hmm. So a times two plus one equals zero to try to solve from there what a equals. But then mm -hmm. I caught on to what you were saying. You have to assume it equals negative one and then solve for a at that point. Yeah. Yeah. To make sure everyone's on the same page. The reason for that is I need agreement, right? I, I want to have a two side limit so I can have continuity. Um, so I need agreement. So I need, I, I need these to be the same thing, so that the two limits agree, which is why I set up this equation. Um, so as I, as I point out yesterday, or I alluded to, I guess, 
Some people will see this and go, oh, I don't need to write all this limit stuff. I'll just jump right to having this equation. Some people will start the problem by writing this, right? They'll just, they'll just plug two into both of these components, set them equal to each other and solve without mentioning limits. But that's, that's, that gets the right number, but it has very little to do with the right concept. And later on, we're going to have a, 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 pro a problem that's similar to this, but that kind of shortcut doesn't work. It does, not only is it, you know, missing the concept, it's, it's technically incorrect. Trying to do that simply won't get you anywhere. There's no way to do that. So if you do that on the homework, you're just hurting yourself because when we get that harder thing, you'll have to come back and relearn this anyway. You'll have to go, oh, what was this about, you know? Um, so, so please don't cut corners on this. This, this part where we're, we're talking about limits, you know, if, if limits weren't important to calculus, we wouldn't spend two to three weeks you know, in a 16-week course, we spend two to three weeks. If limits weren't important to calculus, we wouldn't spend time doing them. But limits are essential to calculus. They are what makes calculus work. And I'll point out, in Cal 2, use limits a lot. Um, and then in other courses, like the whole reason that, you know, you have to take calculus before you take um, certain, like, chemistry, physics, computer science courses is, well, you need the concept of a limit. And in some cases, you need a derivative or you need an integral. You need these tools for calculating things. So um, please don't cut corners on any of these. Even if it seems like, oh, I could save some time and effort. Well, that may be true in the short term, but then you're, you're really just deferring time and effort to later if you do that. And anyway, I don't need to, to harp on that too much. I just want to remind you, please do not cut corners on this kind of problem.